Hello guys and welcome to part 4 in my advanced 2D platformer pathfinding series. In this video, we are going to connect the horizontal points and the horizontal jump points. And we're going to start with all the horizontal points. So start by opening up the pathfinding script. And we can scroll down a bit here. We are now going to add a wrapper method for the built-in draw line. And we're going to call it draw debug line. So what we do here is that we are checking if the debug graph should be visible. And if so, we're going to use the built-in draw line method to draw the line between the points with the given color here. We can scroll down a bit here. And we're going to add a new region here called connect graph points. And we are now going to create the connect points method. And this guy is going to loop through all the points we have in the point list. The first thing we're going to do is to connect all the horizontal points. That means this guy to this point, this point to this point, and so forth. So let's implement this method now. So just underneath here, we're going to implement the connect horizontal points method. It takes in a point in for P1 parameter, which is the current point we are looping through in the list here. Then first of all, we're going to wrap this in an if statement. And the way we are going to scan is always from right to left. So that means if we're on this point, we want to connect to this guy here. So therefore, we only check if the tile is a left edge, or if it's a left wall, or if it's a full tile. So for the left edge, this guy up here, we're going to scan here to there. And if it's a wall tile, we're going to start on this guy and scan forward. Or if it's a full tile, then we're going to connect this point to the next point we find here. We're done going to create a new variable here for the closest point. Then we loop through all the points in the point list. Then we compare the outer loop point P1 with the inner loop P2. And if they are the same, it's the same point. So we can just go to the next point in the list. Then next, we need to find the point. And the next point can either be a right edge, or it can be a right wall, like in this case, or it can be a full tile, one of these guys. And we also need to make sure that the X position of the point is greater than the point we want to connect to. So we're going to add that if statement in here. This means that the P2 point must either be a right edge, a right wall, or a full tile. And the Y position must be the same, which means the same height. And the X position of the point needs to be larger than the current point we need to connect to. Then in here, let me check if the closest point has not yet been initialized. That means that nothing has been assigned to it. Then we're going to initialize the closest point to be the current point we're looping through here in the list. Then we're checking if the P2 point, the current point in the loop, is closer than the closest point we have found so far. Let's say the closest point we found so far is this point. Then we're looping on this point right now. Then this point is going to be closer to the P1 point than this guy. That means that this point is now closer than this point, And this is now going to be the closest point instead. So that is what we are doing here. We're updating the closest position to be the P2 position instead. And we're setting the point ID as well. Then when the loop is finished, we will now have the closest point. If a closest point was found, we're going to call the built-in connect points method for the A star 2D path. And we're going to connect the point one with the closest point here. And then we're going to draw a green line between the points. So let's say this guy. And we have our connect points method right here. But in order to see something now, we need to override the draw method. So underneath the get point info method, we're going to call the public override void for the built-in draw function. And then we check here if the debug graph should be visible. And if so, we are going to connect the points. And by default, it is already set to true here, so we don't need to do anything. Back to the draw method. Let's go to the go.editor. And let's click on play. And now... You can see we have the horizontal connections here, but we have a special case we need to take care of now. As you can see, this guy can now connect through tiles to this guy, and we don't want that. So we're going to adjust this now. Let's bring up the code. You can scroll down a bit. We're going to add a new method called horizontal connection can be made. The correct name for the method is horizontal connection cannot be made. This is fixed in the code up on GitHub. And this guy takes in the P1 point, and the P2 point. So first of all, we are going to convert the position to tile coordinates here for both the P1 position and the P2 position. 
So I'm going to loop through all the tiles between the points. Let's say this is the start tile. And we are looping to the right here. Then we are checking here if the tile is not an empty tile. Which means we basically found a wall right here. Or if the tile below is an empty tile. Let's say we are standing on this tile. And we find an empty tile. Then we are not going to make the connection between these two guys. We're later going to connect them as jump points instead. So we want this guy to be cut off here. So we now need to update the code here. And we're just going to wrap these two lines inside of the horizontal check here. So if the horizontal connection cannot be made between the P1 position and the closest position, only then we're going to connect the points. So let's save the file and bring up the Godot editor and click on play. And as you can see right now, we only have connections between the horizontal points here. All right, we can now go back to the code. And we're going to update our connect points method. And inside of this guy, we are going to run the method called connect jump points. So let's implement this guy now. So just under the connect points method, we're going to add the connect jump points method. And this guy takes in the point info P1 that's being looped through up here. And inside of this guy, we're going to add the method connect horizontal platform jumps. And it's going to see if we can connect the current point P1 that we're looping through here with point P2 that we're looping through here. So let's implement this guy now. So just underneath here, we are going to add the connect horizontal platform jumps method. And the first thing we check is to see if the points are the same. And if so, we're just going to return out of the method because we don't need to update the same point. Then to connect the jump, let's say between this point here and this point here, the Y position needs to be the same. And the P1 point, this guy here, needs to be a right edge. And the P2 point has to be a left edge. So we can connect between them. And we are now going to introduce a jump distance variable as well. So we can decide if we can jump from this guy to this guy here. So for instance, down here, this point and this point are not connected. That is because the jump distance between these two points is too large. So we can't connect them. All right. So press Control Home to go to the top of the file. Then under the show the by graph variable, we're going to add both the jump distance and the jump height variable. And we're now going to work with this guy. So you can press Control Alt minus, at least in Linux, to go back to the previous position in the code. And in here, the Y position of the two points needs to be the same. And point one needs to be a right edge and the point two needs to be a left edge. And we're also going to make sure that the position of the P2 point is greater than the P1 point. Because we're only connecting from right to left here. Right to left and so forth. And for this, we need to convert the local positions to tile positions. And then if the distance between point two and point one are within the jump distance, plus one here, then we can connect the points and we can draw a green line between the points. Press Ctrl S to save the file. Now let's bring up the Google editor and let's click on play. And we can see we have the points connected here for the jumps. In the next part, we are going to connect the diagonal jump points from left to right and also from right to left. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell and see you in the next video. Bye for now.